Hi everybody, this is a black and red discard deck built around Arcane Bombardment and Phyrexian Obliterator. Now, the plan with this deck is we use a lot of early game instants and sorceries as our interaction, keep the board clear, and then keep our opponent's hand clear of things that might be able to take care of our big Phyrexian friend. Then, later in the game, we can drop an Arcane Bombardment, recycle some of our earlier spells, draw some more cards, and then eventually recycle Phyrexian Obliterators with Gix's Command. Now, I had an earlier version of this deck that leaned a little more on Gix's command, but it just wasn't working out, so I added a lot more early game interaction, and for some reason that seemed to do the trick. The Obliterator itself is a great card to get down against mono-red opponents, and can sometimes just mean game over for them, but in all seriousness, this card in this deck should probably just be like three copies of Shieldred and one copy of the Obliterator, because Shieldred's advantage that we get from drawing so many cards with big score and thrill of possibility is often enough to just put us out of the reach of red decks anyway, and give us a win condition that doesn't necessarily have to attack. But for what it's worth, I love playing with the Obliterator anyway, and I thought it'd be fun to give it a spin in an Arcane Bombardment style deck. So let's go to and see a few games with this deck over on the Ranked Standard Ladder. All right, I think we're gonna keep this. We've got some early discard to try and disrupt our opponent before we try to lay down this Obliterator right on time. It's always a tricky balance getting the lands right when you're playing Obliterator. You could go one direction and have everything produce black with a little bit of extra on the side, but might have to tweak that after this game. Let's pilfer our opponent. Hmm, some Obliterating Bolts and Adversary. I think it's the Adversary then. They're welcome to throw their Bolts at the Obliterator. Cutdown's not really gonna have any targets from us. We draw Shieldred's Edict. All right, well, unfortunately, this one of Mountain here is going to cause some problems for casting the Obliterator on time as our opponent flips over the etching of Kumano. Putting the taxes for two brings us to 17. We get Haunted Ridge. That's great. A black producing land. Hmm, maybe should have duressed on our last turn here. Okay, opponent, just another Kumano. And they're gonna attack, get us to 14. Yeah, let's let's save the Edict a little bit longer. We got some time, okay, there's a Springs. We know most of their hand, let's just go ahead and lay this Obliterator. Opponent deciding whether or not to cut down their own creature. All right, here we go. So yeah, if they if they want to bolt it, they can. But that's that's pretty much all of their board except for a couple of cards. Okay, opponent goes to attacks, decides not to do anything. We pick up Gix's command. That's gonna be good as well. Let's go ahead and duress our opponent, just see what that last card is. Another cut down. Let's take one of these bolts. And I think right now, we're just going to pass it on over. Oh, an opponent's got an Evolve Sleeper. Okay, perfect. So now that the other Kumano has flipped, we're going to get a nice bonus out of this Sleeper since I don't know if they can get it out of range of this Gix's Command. But let's, let's do Arcane Bombardment here, set ourselves up, make an investment in our future success. We'll pass it on back to the opponent. So just thinking this through, oh, they've got a Shieldred now. All right, well, the Sleeper is definitely going to get caught in this command. And I think we can take care of Shieldred as well. Let's uh, let's fire off Gix's commands. Let's do each creature two or less and sacrifice as the highest creature they have. Bombardment's going to pick something up here. We get Duress back. Making sure they've got no way to deal with this Obliterator. We'll take this other bolt, wipe that board completely, and yeah, we'll start attacking. We've got a Shieldred's Edict for next turn. Yeah, and opponent scoops it up. Good game. Hmm, two lander. I gotta try again. Oop, nope, can't keep a one lander. Yeah, let's take this. We'll put back two cards, big score and Obliterator. 
I mean, some decks you can just win by laying Obliterator on turn four. Not sure, not sure how red gets around that. All right, opponent's got Rafine's Informant for me here. Black Cleave Cliffs off the top for us. That's great. Keep those black symbols coming. Opponent's discarded a Invasion of Tolvada, a great reanimator spell. So I expect we'll see them try to dump something expensive into the graveyard. Although a good method of building that deck, we'll just pass it on back here. There's another route you can take with the reanimator style, which I kind of like, is you play it almost kind of mid-range. You play out nice three, four, maybe even five drops. And then once your opponent tries to deal with some of those, you just keep bringing them back with the invasion. Solid card all around. Let's, uh, let's Edict here. Don't want our opponent to be able to uh, double block our Obliterator. Not that I think they would, but... Okay. Giving them, giving them some options. They sacrifice the Cathar, which is also good for us, because I don't want them to be taking care of my bombardment later on. So they are running black. Let's see if they've got any removal for us here. We have a backup Phyrexian if they can take care of this one. Opponent's got something, but it might not be the appropriate answer here. Okay, I think we've I think we've got him in a pickle now. Since we know we've got a backup, let's go ahead and attack. Blocking here means they sacrifice all the rest of their lands, so I think we're in a good spot. Let's just keep keep running it over there. Another obliterator. No mana left to cat uh, to cast this edict anyway. So now we're really forcing our opponent into a position. They need some kind of board wipe. And, all right, yeah, sometimes Obliterator's enough. All right, this is a good opener for once. Thanks, Arena. We got three lands and Obliterator. Every land we have produces black. I have been tweaking the lands, too, a little bit. All right, opponent's starting us off here with a Crawling Chorus and a Seed Core. We'll see if this is the white and black version, the white and green version. How are they going to try to poison us? All right, let's do Edict here. I'll make you sacrifice. Sometimes it's worthwhile against these poison decks to just keep yourself under three counters because that really enables a lot of great value for them. Discounts on cards, things get better. I'll try and avoid that as long as we can. That's just a 1-1 Death Toucher. Doesn't do much else. All right, so opponent looks to be on the black and white version of this deck. Let's do a Lightning Strike then. Take care of this Death Touch creature. One of the ways our opponent can rather effectively get rid of an Obliterator. All right, land number four. Let's try for the Obliterator. It's a tough sell against these colors. There's all kinds of ways to exile it or just remove it outright. But on the plus side, if they destroy it, we can probably Gix's Command one back later on. And our backup plan here is Arcane Bombardment anyway. Okay, they're going to give it minus one, minus one, and proliferate. Oh, and they have the Drown and Icker to finish it off. So it takes no damage. We are proliferated up to three counters. And I think the opponent can use Seed Core on this Might. Makes us take more damage, but not any more poison counters than usual. All right, Gruesome Realization the draw for us here. That card would be so much better as an instant. As it stands, we do have big score mana, so we might try to squeeze one of those out here. Hmm. Opponent trying to enchant the might. Let's use Shieldred's Edict. Make him sacrifice that. Get a little bit of a two for one if we can. 
And Necrogen Communion goes to the grave. So we're going to thrill a possibility with our leftover mana. Get rid of the realization. Oh, there's a bombardment. All right. It's all coming together. So we need one more land to be able to cast that. We're a little ways off of doing two things at once here. All right, just to land. Now's our chance. Lay the groundwork for bombardment here. We're big scoring. Proving ground is our only other land. So let's go ahead and cast bombardment off of one of these treasures and just pass it on over. I'm going to keep the proving ground in case we run into switch a situation where we need to draw a card. We've got two go for the throats in hand. Huh. Well, I think we got an obliterator here, yeah. All right, well, we've got mana left for the go for the throat. Prone's got a Vraska's fall. Yeah, we'll just let that go. That's fine. We could have uh, go for the throated our own creature. Get the activation off of Bombardment. Let's play our land. Yeah, let's draw here. So go for the throat has some targets in our opponent's deck. Not a whole lot, but Duress, oh yeah, that's always got a target. All right, let's see what we get off of Bombardment here. No, opponent's got Surge of Salvation. And we pick up Go for the Throat with Bombardment. So still no look at what our, what our opponent is holding on to over there. They Surged us, and Go for the Throat, not too many targets at the moment. We need to start picking up our card draw spells, and our opponent is not doing us any favors. Luckily, there's no Murex on board. That would kind of be our Achilles heel right now. All right, gruesome realization that can draw us some cards. Bombardment picks up an Edict, which has no targets. And that finds us an Obliterator. That's pretty good. Yeah, I think we're going to go for it. All right, has our opponent picked up removal in the meantime? I'm gonna hold on to this land. We can discard that to a big score or a thrill on down the line. Three of a kind go for the throats in hand. All right, blight belly rat. That's a source of proliferation for our opponent. So they could be, they, they could throw that in the way of this obliterator. They want it to die anyway. I don't see we have much choice. We may have to take care of that with a go for the throat. So all our opponent needs is essentially, what, five proliferate cards and four after this rat dies. Let's duress them and see if we can't help ourselves out here. And I guess we'll shield Resedict anyway, just in case they can, like, protect it with another surge. No, they probably want it to proliferate anyway. Okay, so we're up to six poison counters now. Ooh. Opponent's got a Wandering Emperor and a Vanquish. Let's take the Emperor. If they're going to Vanquish, like I know we can get back this Obliterator later on with a Gix's Command if we can keep drawing cards. So it's okay if they destroy it. It's not the best, but we'll take it. And they might be one... Sh no, there's one creature on board, yep. All right, so a seven mana board wipe for our opponent. Obliterator goes to the grave. We draw another gruesome realization. Not sold on this card yet, but it's doing okay. Might might take that out. Let's duress our opponent, see what they got going on. A drown in Icker, we'll take that. Another proliferate effect down the drain. We got four things under bombardment. Unfortunately, none of them contributing to our game plan at the moment is the, the perfect storm of not much to do. We're going to go for the throat this crawling chorus, though. Thanks, opponent. Gonna try to draw some more cards here. All right, we finally pick up a lightning strike. Point that at our opponent's face. And I don't... Mm. Yeah, I think I think that was a slight punt on our part. We'll be fine, but... We could have, I think we could have structured the edicts in a way where we catch this might that pops out of the chorus. 
Oh, and we can't hit it with go for the throat either. Yeah, that was that was a slight oversight there. All right, a seed core. Opponent attacks with the might. That's going to get us to seven tokens. Seven poison counters, that is. Looks like they're thinking about the seed core. Hmm. Just now realized that multiple seed... Ooh, Gix's command. That's what we're looking for right there. All right, what are we, what are we doing? Seed core. So they can make it a 3-2 still. So we'll make them sacrifice, and we'll get some stuff back out of our graveyard. Yep, so doing the doing the tour less won't help there because they can use the seed core to get it out of the way of Gix's command. Bombardment happens. We'll big score away an extra land. Lightning strike to the face, bringing them to nine. Duress has nothing to grab, and we're already getting rid of this creature. We pick up a pilfer off the top, and we'll take two obliterators back. Great. And we'll play out this Haunted Ridge, get an Obliterator down, and the turn right there. The opponent's going to need to draw into some removal, or we're going to eventually recycle this Gix's command and keep bringing back all these Obliterators. Let's pilfer our opponent here just to see what they've got waiting for us. Could have picked up a Wanderer there. That's probably a reason why they didn't fire that card off right away. And just for style, let's throw a few other spells on the stack here. Strike brings them to six. They're holding on to a land. Can't do anything about that. Big score finds us a couple more spells. All right. Well, let's get in here. And we'll pass it on back play this obliterator but I think the next spell should do it since we should have a lightning strike under there so unless the, yep <laughs> unless they've got something good game all right well three lands I mean this this hand is like almost the strategy of this deck in a nutshell oh opponent with a training grounds good for you Almost the perfect curve here. Second obliterator off the top. We're going to wait on this duress until right, probably the turn before we play this. Opponent flashes in a mastermind. We're going to lightning strike that. I guess that pairs kind of well with the training grounds. Although it does let your opponent draw a card. Opponent hits us with a no way out. I'm going to pitch one of these obliterators, I think, since we have Gix's command in hand. And we'll go big score for the other one. We draw a thrill. Okay, that's pretty good. So let's duress our opponent now. I really want to play obliterator next turn. All right, we can only take the, take the fading hope. And they do have a good answer in that second shieldred. So Shield of the Apocalypse is on the stack. Let's do Thrill now. Let's get rid of this Obliterator now then. No sense in wasting our turn four, but unfortunately we just pick up some lands. So opponent's gonna hit us with this zombie from No Way Out. And more lands off the top as Shieldred hits us. All right. So a couple of things to deal with here before we can start hammering away with obliterators. Opponent plays out the Shieldred we knew about. Brings us down to 12 with the Apocalypse. And we see Bombardment off the top. Okay. Well, let's Gix his command. We need to address this board or we're going to lose. Get back a couple of obliterators here. Also manages the number of cards in our graveyard so that they can't flip Vanilla Shieldred. She needs a better name than that. Luckily, they've discarded the Apocalypse, but that could mean they have a backup copy in hand, which would be terrible. All right, they do not, so we're safe. 
All right, what do we do here? I think we play Swamp. And let's go for Bombardment. Why not? Why not? All right, opponent's got Invasion of Amonkhet. Let's discard a card. Let's see. Eight things down there, so they're going to be able to flip Shieldred, but they might be a little short on mana. Let's see. Yeah, I think they're one short. So unless they picked up an untapped land here... All right, they just opt for the battle. They're going to flip over the invasion. And the convert is going to be a obliterator. All right, well, it's it's all coming down to this edict here. Uh, let's see, is that a token? No, it's not. Okay, let's go edict on a non-token creature. Come on, bombardment. All right, go for the throat. I think this will work out. So let's target the Obliterator. And then that'll force them to Edict their Shieldred. Okay. And then we can follow up with an Obliterator. All right. Another Shieldred the Apocalypse is bad. All right. Opponent's got an Edict for our Obliterator. Bit of a top deck battle here. Oh, no. <laughs> That's like the one thing I was hoping you didn't have. Shielded the Apocalypse comes down. Let's go play with fire on the opponent. We get Pilfer. Let's see what you've got holding on to there. And go for the throat can take care of Shielded the Apocalypse. We're still at four. Oh, yes. And we snag regular Shielded out of their hand. Put this land to the bottom. Trying to keep the, the chain of spells going. But we're a little light here. All right, there's an Obliterator. Four turns and we get there. Well, what's our, okay, what's our opponent got? Let's attack and see what it is. Nothing for this creature. Well, let's play a second one. Have they drawn the removal? Have they got the board wipe? All right, clock is ticking. Let's go for the second bombardment. Might as well get the payoff if they can take care of these creatures. And we got there. Good game. All right. We got a mulligan this. We'll keep this one just because we have the gruesome realization. It's not great, but we'll try it. Been trying to do better at mulliganing two land hands. All right, we're making our opponent discard here. We can take Swift Spear or Felden. I think it's going to be Felden. Opponent plays out the Swift Spear here. That's going to get the counter. Another land, but no spell to go with it. So we just take two from this Swift Spear. That's great. All right, still need a third land here. Let's go Edict on the Swift Spear. Might as well Edict while it's the only creature on board. Save Argo for the throat for later. Definitely need some lands, though. The longer we wait on this realization, the less life we're going to have to play with here, so... Ugh, Takenuma. All right, let's play it out as a land. And let's go Duress. So they can Lightning Strike us in response. They don't. All right, we'll take Strike. They've got to play with Fire and a Mountain left. Pretty good for us, but you never know with these decks. Putting Attacks with the Kumano brings us to 13. Do we? Yeah, I think we do. Let's go for the throat on this creature right now. Since they didn't play anything else, and usually at four they can play pretty much whatever they want to. Land number four for us means we can big score. Oh, but they pull a Swift Spear off the top. Gonna hit us with a play with fire for two. That brings us to 11. 
They scry to the top. Also not good. And then attacks us for two, brings us to nine. Come on, big score. Let's discard the realization. All right, we get an obliterator. <laughs> we get two obliterators, sure. Well, that's a good blocker for now. What do you got, opponent? Second Swift Spear. All right, they could try to go around it. No? Okay, yeah, we're not quite low enough that that's a good plan. They're going to have to go a little wider. Let's, uh, let's attack. They're down to one card, and I don't think there's anything but maybe a squee that they could get to go around these guys, so... To get around profitably, I mean. Oh, opponent's got a Phoenix chick. All right. They're, they're building it up. Attacks with the chick. Chick can't block anyway. All right. That brings us to seven. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. Gix's command. I've never been so happy to see you. We're going to destroy all their creatures and give somebody lifelink on our side. <laughs> oh, wow. That is... One of the best top decks I have ever had. Yeah, hit our opponent for 12. We gain 7, go to 14, and you're up, opponent. What do you got? All right. Opponent may have stepped away from the keyboard here, but uh, yeah, let's get in and finish this one off. Good game.